Hey guys, it's Adam from Musa Pixel and welcome back. Now, I want to dedicate today's talk to uh, one of my students and friends, Friederike from Germany, also known as Frida, who um, introduced me to a neuroscientist during one of our sessions together because we like to kind of go off on tangents and shoot the shit about all kinds of different fun stuff. And she introduced me to this one particular neuro neuroscientist who I believe is called, his name is David Eagleman. Um, he's all over the internet. There's TED Talks. There's all kinds of lectures by him online. So you can definitely binge watch his stuff. And he tends to take on a very interesting, unique perspective of neuroscientists, uh, neuroscience. And some of the things he talks about are absolutely mind-blowing. And one of the things that he said during one of his talks made a little light bulb go off in my head because it created a connection between what he was researching in his own work and the work of a lot of other smart people such as Neil deGrasse Tyson or Elon Musk or another uh, social scientist who I'll call JP because apparently mentioning his name on YouTube can can cause live podcasts to get unplugged immediately so we'll call him JP for the sake of argument somebody I've spoken about in the past um, but they all have alluded to the same facet of, of the brain, of thought, of what separates the human species and very limited few other species of mammal on this planet compared to other species. And that's the subject of creativity. That creativity is a very special subject with regards to intelligent life because it's very often an indication that that species has evolved a little bit beyond their peers in this mammalian world that we're a part of namely humans who kind of tend to sit on the top of that list as far as we know so far until the aliens come the pod people come and, and claim first place but then there's also dolphins elephants that have the ability to 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 demonstrate incredible creativity like the way dolphins will make circles of mud with their tails causing fish to jump out of the air and catch them in their open mouths as they try to escape this trap or the way elephants can paint for instance which is pretty remarkable but on the top of that list when you think about astrophysics and quantum physics and social science and artistry and all of these different facets of creativity well that as far as we know really does belong to humans for now at least we're the ones who have who've grasped it to the best of our abilities why is that significant well because that creative world is a bit of a double-edged sword if you think about it because on one end it gives us access to a whole multitude of different ways of visualizing what is what has been and what could be but can also be at the forefront of why us artists tend to struggle and stress quite a bit and it brings us back to this topic that i tend to find myself and a lot of us listening as well kind of find ourselves uh falling back on once you dig deep enough and that's the subject of insecurity that subject of lack of confidence in what it is that we do, maybe a lack of footing, the feeling that we're not exactly sure what the process is and how to nail down our thoughts and feelings into something tangible and, in our case, visual, right? And when you really start to break down how the human brain works, there's a reality. Scient scientifically speaking, there's a reality that's, that us artists have to be aware of and have to embrace. We have to come to terms with the reality that we find ourselves in being biologically designed the way we have been designed. And this one, I remember this one particular uh, um, uh, smart guy we'll call, who I will call JP. I'll let you do the math there. Spoke about how, and this is something I've mentioned on my channel before, spoke about how... Um, artists creative people are by definition risk takers we are the type of people who kind of sit at that crossroads between reality and fantasy and try to find creative ways of creating synapses between these two how we can 
take what we have so far as evidence and hypothesize what something would look like. And this is for this very reason that I would put, for instance, astrophysicists and scientists in general into the, quote, creative category. I am addicted to Neil deGrasse Tyson, his star talk. I talk about him all the time. I'm always quoting him to my students. I'm sure that my students are quite sick and tired of, of hearing me describe why the sky is blue or what the wind chill factor is, etc. I, I'm, I'm fascinated with this kind of stuff. But when I listen to people like Neil deGrasse Tyson or JP or these other people talk, they too live at this crossroads between reality and fantasy. We are hypothesizing. We are trying to forge new synapses in the brain. We're not only rehashing and reusing existing information and evolving on that. We are literally living in this space of creation. And we are taking the responsibility as artists to fashion something tangible out of that. And you have to sit back for a moment and realize what a monumental task this is for the human brain. Furthermore, because this is such a, an organic, unique process between one human being and another human being, that no two artists are created the same. How one person capture, captures visual art, let, forget about the other forms of artistry and expression like dance or music, just visual arts, how varying, how different one visual artist is from somebody else. That's not just a difference in line or color or form. This is a difference in brain chemistry. This is a difference in how an artist visualizes and tries to capture their own unique world in their own unique visual way. This is monumental. It's remarkable. It's fascinating. And when it succeeds, it's incredibly rewarding. It's, I, I can, I can, the only thing I can compare that feeling to is the birth of human life. That feeling of looking at something outside of yourself that never existed before, but now does, thanks to some effort on your own part. Like I look at my own kids and I think to myself how remarkable it is that I'm having a conversation with somebody who I created. That's kind of amazing. And I look at my art very often the same way, that you can fashion a reality out of your imagination. Therein lies the big challenge of how many different facets of life you have to grasp and master and understand, just to name a few of the many different facets of this reality that we have to at least have a very decent layman's understanding of, like light and atmosphere and geology and costume and facial design and musculature and anatomy and perspective and the list goes on and on and on. I mean, these are very, very complex things for the human brain to grasp that most people stop developing in their brain at a very early age. That's very often why you can look at a seven-year-old and you can look at a 30-year-old who hasn't trained in art and you would have a very hard time distinguishing who did the drawing because the human brain just stops making an effort to develop creatively and visually after that point unless that person has that unique desire to do so. And that to me is where biology starts to kick in, where at a certain point you're not being force-fed artistic principles from your elementary school, but you're actually taking it upon yourself to continue to venture down that road on your own. And that road can be a very intimidating, cold, empty place, can't it? <laughs> it can be an incredibly invigorating and wonderful and, and enlightening world, but it can also be a very overwhelming world because one of the things that nature keeps teaching me over and over over again is that no matter how no matter how big i get for my own britches nature always has a way of putting me back in my place and showing me just how amazingly rich and diverse and complicated and fascinating and meaningful the world is and when i'm talking about nature i'm not just talking about trees and grass and and rivers i'm talking about the human body as a manifestation of nature as well I mean, I've been teaching anatomy for years, but I'm quite positive that even if I taught anatomy and all of the complexities of anatomy for the next 250 years, there wouldn't be a day that would go by that I wouldn't feel like I was learning something new. And every single time I teach an anatomy class, I am always being challenged with questions from students that I have to look up and learn. There's just too much to know. So as artists, 
what we end up having to do is, well, try our best to be able to figure these things out through trial and error, to be able to figure these things out through our own human experiences. And wherever we can, try to reach out to our peers, to other professionals, to people who might have done, had a little bit more time on this planet to do some problem solving, some artistic problem solving, to help us to speed up the process of our understanding and piggyback off of the knowledge of other artists that precede us, such as teachers or mentors. A lot of that time, however, is spent on your own, in your own quiet space, trying to solder different different neurons in your brain together to figure certain things out. And some of these concepts are incredibly complex. And what I want to share with you today is the understanding that you're not just drawing pretty pictures. When you're drawing a character, when you're capturing a moment, when you're visually storytelling, when you're lighting a character, when you're trying to capture that perspective, when you're trying to inject a personality and a life into these characters, into the environments that you're creating, understand that you are literally doing nature's work. You have to realize that when you're taking on the task of trying to capture a sense of reality through character design or environment design or even prop design or furniture or costume or hair or prosthetics or human expression or the life of an animal or atmosphere itself and the way light interacts, you are, you are manipulating the fabric of creation and that is a, an incredibly huge endeavor and unlike astrophysicists unlike social scientists unlike quantum physicians you don't have the luxury of math to figure it out whatever calculations whatever problem solving you have to do is very often done in your own head so when you feel incompetent when you feel discouraged when you feel overwhelmed Understand that that's all part of the job. You are one of those brave few that step away from the formulaic way of living life and you choose to pursue a path that is unpredictable. Of course, you're not doing it entirely on your own and that's where teachers come in and that's where, uh, that's where that's where some kind of guidance can help. And that's where a community comes in. When you feel completely lost, when you feel overwhelmed, that you can reach out to other people who might have had a little bit more time and experience overcoming those obstacles. But don't beat yourself up for thinking that you're too stupid or incompetent because you are literally fashioning synapses in your brain as you work. What you need to do is, number one, understand that you are by far not alone. But understand that the endeavor of being an artist, as misunderstood and very often underappreciated as it might be by a more business-oriented person, much less of a risk-taker type of personality, that you're a pioneer. And there's a great responsibility with being a pioneer. That you're capturing real life, and as many artists before you have done, you are literally immortalizing what you are capturing and that's not something to be taken for granted. So when you feel overwhelmed, you're overwhelmed because you're already brilliant. You're overwhelmed because you're already brave. So instead of hating on yourself and instead of feeling down on yourself because you are, are struggling to overcome a certain obstacle, instead embrace the reality that you are one of the chosen few, one of the brave warriors to take on this monumental challenge. And that in and of itself is an incredible achievement and something which you should cherish and nurture and continue to develop, even if sometimes it hurts. All right, so with that said, thank you again for joining me. Thank you again to Frida for, for that wonderful recommendation. And of course, I love you all with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.